Good Friday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. We have daily severe weather chances today through early next week, and this does include the potential for tornadoes and then an early season heat wave. How warm could temperatures soar through the weekend into next week? We'll get to those details later on in today's video, as well as an active weather pattern turning into next week with multiple rounds of storms. We'll also get to those details later on in today's video. But looking back to yesterday, it was an active day not only across the southern plains but also back into the inner mountain west where we had multiple wind reports we had 24 wind reports with 10 hail reports yesterday and actually we did have three tornado reports with one of those being across western kansas and then out here into california as well on your thursday for a total of 37 severe weather reports across the country yesterday but as we go through today another active jet stream is going to be pushing across the united states States. And as a result, we have another day of severe weather in three separate areas here. We have a slight risk for severe storms up into west central Nebraska. We have another slight risk down here into the Dallas Fort Worth area down toward the San Angelo, Texas region. This does cover central Texas, and we have a marginal risk across the lower Mississippi Valley into eastern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and southwestern Alabama. Those are the areas at highest risk for severe storms later on today. But if you like detailed weather breakdowns on North America, including Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics, definitely hit the subscribe button down below. It's free to do when you get detailed weather breakdowns on this channel each and every morning at 9 a.m. I definitely appreciate it. Also very important to press the like button down below as well. It helps to get all of this weather information out to as many people as possible. Definitely appreciate that as well. But like I said, we have the severe weather threat across the country here in a couple different areas. We have significant hail possible across west central Nebraska today. This definitely does include golf ball size hail or larger. And we also have another significant hail zone down here toward the Dallas-Fort Worth area getting back down into San Angelo, Texas, where we do have the potential again for golf ball size hailstones or larger. And then we have potentially up to quarter size hail possible across eastern Louisiana, southern Mississippi into southwestern Alabama later on today. We do have a 2% shading of tornadoes in all three of those zones across the Great Plains here, especially up there into Nebraska, getting down into central Texas, and again, across the lower Mississippi Delta region. We definitely have to be on high alert for the potential of an isolated tornado or two going through your Friday. So starting off with the noon time frame, we got some widely scattered showers and storms, probably not that big of a deal through the noon time frame. Frame. But as we get to peak daytime heating late this afternoon, early this evening, we'll fire up some showers and storms up here into west central Nebraska. These could be the big hailers producing those golf ball size hailstones or larger. A couple storms over here into Iowa, those could be getting a little feistier as well with some hail, probably sub severe hail, probably under quarter size. And then we got to watch for some of these storms across the southern plains and the lower Mississippi Valley going through this evening. That continues into the overnight hours, but I do think think the northernmost areas up here into South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa will probably be more favored for the overnight thunderstorm activity as we have more of the instability surging to the north with an active jet stream keeping the storms organized later into the evening hours. And then that continues into the 6 a.m. time frame on your Saturday with off and on showers and storms up here across portions of the Midwest into the southwestern Great Lakes region. And you do see the total rainfall accumulation will be highest up here across portions of the northern plains into the upper midwest we could be seeing up to an inch maybe two inches of rain especially across nebraska portions there of iowa getting up into southeastern minnesota and northern wisconsin just going through your saturday morning time frame but another zone down here in the lower mississippi valley especially into southern mississippi here where we could be talking about over an inch of rain as well going through your saturday morning but going through this week and it's all about the heat. We have an early season heat wave brewing across the middle of the country, rising heights in an upper level ridge that does spike all the way into southern Canada as we go into Sunday, May 7th. And you do see as a response, temperatures will be rising into the low to mid 90s on Saturday across a majority of the Great Plains here. 
from southeastern Nebraska back through Kansas, Oklahoma, and portions of central Texas. We could be pushing up to near 95, 96 degrees on your Saturday afternoon. And looking at Saturday night, we're not going to be cooling off too much. With that upper level ridge really building across the middle of the country, you can expect low temperatures widespread into the 50s and 60s across the Mississippi Valley in the central and southern plains. And it's really not too cool to the north either. We're still seeing the mid and upper 40s up here into the Dakotas and Minnesota going through your Saturday night. And then as we go into Sunday, the higher springboard of which to start with temperatures in the morning starting in the 50s and 60s will jump right back up into the 90s across portions of Illinois getting up here into the 90s in southern Iowa all the way south and westbound to Texas on your Sunday. So definitely a large early season heat wave to take shape this weekend across the country. And it does come at the cost of some thunderstorms thunderstorms and severe weather actually going into this weekend and early next week. So looking on Saturday, we have an advancing warm front driving to the north and east on Saturday that arrives across the lower Midwest into the western Ohio Valley on Sunday and right along that boundary that will be the focal point for lift for thunderstorms going into later on this week. And in fact, look at the instability reservoir going through Saturday. We have extreme instability in the purple shade of colors. That's at least 4,000 joules per kilogram of instability on Saturday. And there's no surprise that the Storm Prediction Center has already hoisted a level 2 of 5, a slight risk for severe storms where the better instability and shear overlap up across western Illinois, southeastern Iowa into portions of Missouri here so definitely watching that but also along that dry line we're going to be watching the potential for some stronger storms down here with the marginal risk across Oklahoma northwest Arkansas getting into central Texas going through your Saturday this does include the threat for tornadoes we have a 5% shading of tornadoes on Saturday across western Illinois getting into northeastern Missouri so definitely something to keep an eye on we also have a 2% shading of tornadoes down across southeastern Oklahoma into central Texas as we go through Saturday afternoon and evening. So timing this out, the noon time frame on Saturday, there will be a cap on the atmosphere, which means it's a shallow warm layer aloft preventing a lot of these thunderstorms from exploding into the afternoon. But by the time we get toward the dinner time frame, 6 o'clock p.m. on your Saturday, we are exploding the atmosphere up with some supercells down here into portions of central Texas. These will likely be producing some very large hail and possibly even some downburst wind gusts over 60 miles per hour. But we also will have to monitor the potential for tornadoes across central Texas by 6 o'clock and then some spotty showers and storms along that warm front farther to the north through the late evening hours toward the midnight time frame on Sunday and then going into your Sunday morning as you're waking up for any errands you have to run or going to church services. Just be watching out for showers and storms across the Mississippi Valley here. A couple of those storms could be producing some hail and some gusty winds turning in toward your Sunday morning. Then as we go into Sunday we do this all over again. So right underneath that ridge we have the warmer temperatures, dew points will be rising and therefore another chance for severe storms with a level 2 of Five in the yellow area. This is a slight risk up across Iowa and northern portions of Missouri with that marginal risk again down here through portions of eastern Kansas, central Oklahoma into central Texas on your Sunday. We also have a marginal risk up into southern lower Michigan, northeastern Indiana into portions of Ohio as we go into Sunday as well. And look at Sunday's instability. You can see these purples and pinks showing up especially in Missouri. That's up to 5,000 joules per kilogram instability that is almost off the charts energy here going into Sunday and we do have to watch the potential farther to the north remember how I uh, told you guys how the instability and the wind shear will be strongest overlapping across the lower Midwest and the Ohio Valley. Well, we're watching near the warm front. We have a couple storms firing up into northwest Iowa there as we get to 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. And watch these storms as they push into northwestern Illinois, southwestern Wisconsin. By the evening hours, a couple supercells with hail and damaging winds will be possible. But then as we go after dark and toward the late evening hours and overnight, we're going to be developing what we call an 
MCS or a mesoscale convective system, these are more likely to produce very heavy and torrential rain, frequent lightning, and also taking advantage of all that energy, producing some damaging winds, large hail out here into the 1 a.m. time frame, well after dark, into your Monday morning, and that continues to propagate to the east-southeast across the Ohio Valley and the Illinois River Valley through your 7 a.m. time frame on Monday. But going through that time frame, so from now through Monday, we're going to be adding up some more rainfall. So especially into the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, places that didn't see too much rain over the weekend. Well, getting into your Monday morning, we likely will be seeing over an inch of rain across many of these areas. And we'll be adding up into the totals into the upper Midwest with an additional half inch to up to an inch of rain, especially if you get under some of those thunderstorms into early next week. And speaking of next week, that ridge will be sticking around. So the heat will be sticking around through much of next week from Wednesday, May 10th through at least that Mother's Day time frame on Sunday, May 14th. And you notice how you don't see much blue on the map besides down here into Southern California and portions of Arizona. That's where the troughs will be and the below normal temperatures. But that means the heat will be on into next week. So starting on Wednesday, that upper level ridge spikes all the way up into Canada. We have a trough out here across the western United States on Wednesday. But that will be quickly eaten up by that ridge late next week on Friday. And look up here into portions of Southern Alaska. We have a very strong trough developing late next week. That'll only encourage the ridge downstream to strengthen as we get closer towards the Mother's Day weekend time frame. So that means downstream from that trough we're going to see some very warm and well above average temperatures getting into that Mother's Day weekend time frame. But it also does mean we're going to see well above average precipitation across especially the Great Plains and in particular Oklahoma and Texas will be well above average going through through that Wednesday, May 10th, through the Sunday, May 14th time frame on Mother's Day, and we'll be drying out a little bit across the Pacific Northwest and the West Coast, as well as a small part of Maine up here into the Northeast as well. But in the middle of the country, that is where the active weather is expected to be. So on Wednesday, we have the dew points rising back into the 60s, the 70s farther to the south. That will surge even farther north with the 60 degree dew points getting into southern Manitoba, portions there of Minnesota and the eastern. Dakotas on Friday, and then we have more of a dry line cold front type of setup as we go into next weekend with more severe weather potential feeding off of this moisture and instability as we get toward that Mother's Day weekend time frame. So definitely something to keep an eye on. And looking through that time frame, through Mother's Day itself, very heavy rain, especially down here across the middle and lower Mississippi Valley into coastal Texas in particular. Some of these rainfall totals going in through that time frame next weekend could be over 5, 6, or 7 inches, especially if you did live down here into Corpus Christi, uh, Houston, Galveston, up here to Lake Charles or even portions of Shreveport. Something to watch down here going through next weekend. And then on up across the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys, these rainfall amounts could be pushing 2 to 4 inches during that time frame. So definitely a good drink of water with these storms with repeated rounds of storms going through that Mother's Day weekend time frame. Well, if you guys want to follow me for additional weather forecast updates on Twitter, make sure to hit the description down below and follow me on Twitter at hweather420. I definitely appreciate it. Also also remember to like the video down below, give it a thumbs up, leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Friday, everybody, a great weekend, and I will see you all in the next video.